Hello, this is Pastor Jeff. We want to thank you for joining us for this online worship experience. I hope you're blessed by this word today. And if you want to know more about Hope Church, you can visit us at this website below me, realchurchforrealpeople.com. Okay, if you want to dance a little bit too. I want to dance like David. I want to faith like Paul. I want to sing like Silas tearing down those prison walls. I want to face that fire. It won't burn me though. God's got my back, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. I want to walk like Moses, right through the waves. One day I'll see my promised land, no longer slaves. Though the fear is talking, no one can take out my faith. I'm gonna praise, I'm gonna praise. I praise that mountain moving body, raising breaker and chain. Gonna praise, I'm gonna praise. I praise that heaven seated, undefeated, highest the name. That's who I like Mary. I want to break my vase. I want to sleep like Daniel even in a lion's cave. I'm gonna get that promise just like Jericho. Yeah, I know what will make it fall. I'm gonna praise. I'm gonna praise. I praise that mountain. like Jesus, that kind of grace. I want to live like I've got no more precious time to waste. I'm going to give him glory with all my thanks, because there's no greater, stronger, higher name, and that's who I praise. so good to be in the house of the Lord and it is a great honor to be invited on this pastor appreciation morning of your pastor and his lovely wife it is uh, 
something I don't take lightly when I stand in this pulpit. It's not about fairy tales and ear tickling sermons. It's about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so I just want you one more time to, first of all, let's praise the Lord. Give the Lord 10 seconds of praise. Come on, you. Come on, you. You can do it. Come on, young people. Come on, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I see you moving out there. So we got to praise him. Amen. Oh, we praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I also want to show our love and appreciation one more time to Pastor Jeff and April. Can you just show your love and appreciation to them so much for all their hard work and labor that they're doing here in this wonderful church? Thank you. You may be seated if you can. Praise God. You know, as Jeff was saying, we've known each other for quite many years. Yes. We were a lot skinnier then, too, yes. you know, when we first met. Yeah, much younger. And, and I was actually taller. <laughs> but see, uh, my wife keeps me in line. Amen. Amen. So it is such a great privilege to be here and to stand in this place on this Sunday morning. I said uh, I was going to kid around. You know, our church is having Pastor Appreciation Day this morning. And see, they're having it because they appreciate me that I'm gone. <laughs> no, I'm just picking. I'm picking. No, ours is coming up here soon, too. And uh, as a pastor's heart, we love and appreciate our people. Amen. With the sheep that God gives us, we do our best by the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit every Sunday, every Wednesday night when we teach our hearts out. And uh, I'll tell you what, pastoring is not easy today. Pastor, if, if, let me just say this. If you're not called... Don't be up here. Amen. That's right. Because it's not a profession, it's a calling. That's right. That's good. And God, I believe in it on my heart, God's getting ready to separate the wheat from the chaff, the goats from the sheep. Come on. Those who are really hungry and thirsty for the things of God to those who have just been playing church. Come on. I'm telling you, we have got to stop playing church and really start worshiping God. Right. Really start putting Him first in our lives. Come on, that's right. Praise the Lord. It's time that we start getting real with God. Amen. This morning, I'm not going to take real long, I promise. I'm short, so are my sermons. People know in my church, I'm not a long-winded preacher. I preached over 15 minutes over the regular time in my church last week. And uh, boy, you thought I was going to have a bomb go off. The nursery was full of babies. And I opened up the door, and the ladies are filled with sweat. And they're like, why did you preach so long? I'm like, it's only 15 minutes. So I promise I'll only preach for about two hours this morning, okay? So just sit tight and get ready for the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Nate. I appreciate that. If we could, let's stand in the presence of the Lord as we open our Bibles this morning to Matthew, the 13th chapter. I want to speak a message the Lord has laid upon my heart called the Kingdom Net. Come on. The Kingdom Net. Amen. Matthew 13, verses 47 and 48. If you're there, say amen. 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 All right. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. Say unto a net. That was casted into the sea and gathered of every kind. Say every kind. Every kind. Which was in, it was full. And they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but casted the bad away. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in the name that's above every name, Jesus. There is power in the name. There's still healing in the name. There's deliverance in the name. Lord, there's redemption. There's, there's, there's strength. There's hope in the name. Father, that's the name that we got to cry out as that song says. When you don't know what to say, just say Jesus. Jesus, speak to us this morning on this Pastor Appreciation Morning. Lord, as we just love and appreciate Jeff and April and all the rest of the staff and crew here, bless this church abundantly. And Lord, may your word fall on good soil today of our hearts and realize, Lord, we're in this together. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory for it's in Jesus' name we pray. And God's wonderful people said, Amen. 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 Before you sit down, look to your neighbor and say, it's so good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. I, you may be seated. I just feel the Lord leading me in another direction if that's okay. The Bible tells us that the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. Now, back in the biblical times in 2,000 plus years ago, fishing in the area of the Sea of Galilee was a very strong economic way of making money. 
and fishing was a, a, a very, very popular, but also a, it, was, it helped the economy in the Galilean area. So as you would realize, fishing isn't like it was today. So the, the sea fishers still use the nets. But how many of you ever went fishing before? Raise your hand. With a pole. How many of you ever got snagged? How many of you ever had to snap your line? How many of you just threw the thing to the side and said, I'm going to Walmart and I'll get fish sticks? <laughs> no, I was picking. But in this story, in this parable that Jesus is speaking, when he said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. Remember when Jesus was looking in choosing his 12 disciples, he came across two of them. The Bible says that they were mending their nets. Now, any kind of fisherman that's any good at what he does, you will realize the kingdom net for here for us is the church. It takes maintenance to keep the church alive. It takes the maintenance to keep the church going. And, it, and listen, this isn't something that, I, that I, I realized that God is speaking way back then, but he's speaking to us today, is this. If you don't maintain and you don't take care of yourself in prayer, in praise, in worship, my friends, you too will fall apart. So the fishermen had to check every net. They had to check the knots. They had to clean the nets. If they didn't, the nets would eventually rot. Do you realize the church is the life source of the church is the Lord Jesus Christ? And it breaks my heart so much as we see in a world today that so many people are getting away from preaching about sin, preaching about hell, preaching about how we are to live. My friends, listen, woe to those who say good is evil and evil is good. But my friends, we're living in the time and the day when people just want their ears tickled. They don't want to hear the truth. They just want to have the three hymns in a sermon and on their way to the rest. Come on, come on, man. Now, with this in mind, Jesus uses this illustration. He said, when you throw and cast a net into the sea, what it does is it pulls along the sea bottom or along the water. But see, it doesn't take one, one person can't do it. The pastor and your wife, they just can't do it by themselves. Come on. <coughs> So it takes a team. And they pull that net along as the air wind takes the sails of the ship as the Holy Spirit leads us. And so they try, they, when, it, when it's ready to pull in, they, it doesn't take one person. It takes a whole fishing crew to bring those nets in. Now today they have like hydraulic lifts and pulleys and all these things. But back then they had to use their hands. Can I tell you something? Fishing is a wonderful thing. But if you want to be a part of the kingdom, you've got to get your hands dirty. Come on, man. You can't, you can't sit back and watch everybody else do the work and you just sit back and reap the blessings. It doesn't happen that way. So I want, I want us to use an illustration. Uh, Jeff and April, would you come up here for a second? Now remember, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net to the church. And it catches good fish and it catches bad fish. Our job as pastors, we're to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to whosoever will listen. It doesn't matter what kind of fish it is. Listen, you're going to bring in good, you're going to bring in bad. You hope the bad get good again, get washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. But things happen. And I feel, man, I, I, I just feel so overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit right now. Now, Jeff and April, I want you to come stand right here if you would. Aren't they a beautiful couple? Dearly beloved, we are gathered. No, just kidding. Now, I remember, how many of you remember when Jeff and April, when he started this church, was in that old brick church? I remember that. And then I remember how the Lord, we walked through here, and it was like a bowling alley. And Jeff, Jeff picked up a bowling pin, and he gave it to me. You remember that? And I put Hope Center on that, and I have it sitting on my shelf in my office and every Sunday I walk in I see it I say God bless them today God bless them today now with that going on all the ups and downs of ministry in fishing it's not easy so here we are we got Jason come on up here those of you who lead worship come on up here those of you who lead worship come on up Now, 
<laughs> no, we're not going to go there. Okay, so, so now we're here together. The pastor has a worship team that helps lead us into the presence of God. Okay, but say one of the leaders got a little tiff. Something happened. There was something that was said, but, but it was said the wrong way. Someone repeated it, not the way pastor said it. So Jason leaves the church. Go sit down. Now I'm telling you, this is how Satan works. Now... The rest of the praise team, they, they, they really want to encourage Jason. They really want to uplift him. So they go to him, and they pray for him, and they encourage him, and they bring him back to the church. Yeah, kicking and screaming. Now, how many of us do we have prayer warriors in here? Pray around the altar. If you are, come up here. Come up here and stand on this side. Come on, prayer team. Come on. Don't be bashful. Okay, while you were praying for someone at the altar, someone just didn't like the, the words you had to speak because they were truth over you. How many of you know that's one gift I can honestly say God gives me that when I go to pray for someone, I can tell what they need. The Holy Spirit reveals it to me. But something happened. Somebody didn't like the way I prayed, so you left the church. Go ahead. But then the pastor and his lovely wife, they, they got in contact with you to find out what was going on. And it was all covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. So you came back to church. Hallelujah. Now how about the media team? Those of you who do media on uh, computers, sound system, come on up. Don't worry about the camera. Just come on up. Amen. Yeah, look at this fine bunch. How many, pa Pastor, how many days, how many sermons did you ever have or service you have where the sound just wasn't right? <laughs> I get that, I do that, and I'm like, I'm like, you know, or I'm like, but someone got offended by that. Go sit down. Right here in front, don't go, don't go far. Go sit down. Why, he didn't like the way I, I, I did the camera. I didn't turn it on, I didn't turn it on his best side. He's upset about it. And then someone else who was running the sound, actually running the sound board. The pastor was like, come on, let's get this sound right. Let's get it checked. Let's do it right. We got to be professional. It's got to be the best. But you're human. But he didn't mean that to be in any way wrong. It's just when you come to church, we're to give God our very best. So one of you, go ahead and sit down. Oh, my. We only have two more people left. Now, listen, as a pastor, our hearts start breaking a little bit. But then you got some youth leaders, Jason, go ahead, Braden, go over and encourage them to come back to the house of the Lord. <laughs> All right. There are two kinds of youth leaders in this world. <laughs> Tall and short. <laughs> All right. So now, okay, we, we're, we're doing good. The church is being blessed. The church is being starting to fill up. Everything's going good. Now, how many of you just love the hymns? You just love the hymns. Now, be honest. It's okay. You love the hymns. Now, let me ask you. You love the hymns more than the contemporary stuff. Just be honest. Praise the Lord. This church is really blessed. <laughs> Now, how many, how many of you ever thought, oh, that music's too loud? <laughs> Raise your hand. That music's too loud. Okay, I want you to, if you would, can you, can you come up and at least sit up front here? Those of you who think some, some sir, boy, it's just too loud. Come on up. Come on up. It's okay. She's already up front. So it was too loud, and, and they just, they just I don't know, they just rocked too much there at that church. And, and I can't stand sitting in the front row, and I don't like the lighting of the church, and I don't like the carpet color, and oh, it just, oh, I just, on. oh, I don't like the come way on. things uh, look here. I don't like the screens and all the fancy lights and all that. I just don't care for all that stuff. So you guys leave. Now, understand this. She says, I'm out of here. <laughs> now, please don't get offended, but I'm going to use you as the bad fish. 
Now listen, there are some times people will come into the church and they're in, no, the only mission it is is to cause trouble. Hello. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about you when I said that. You're too, you look too sweet. <laughs> we'll talk later. But listen, there are some times as pastors, it's hard to see people go, but there are some times we just got to let them go. Because if they're not happy here, guess what? They're going to go to another church and eventually they're not going to be happy there. They're going to go to another church and they're not going to be happy there. They're going to go to another church and they're not going to be happy there. And then they're going to say things about the pastor. They're going to say things about the worship. They're going to say things about the wife, the pastor's wife. Listen, I don't care. You could give them a three square meal a day and they still won't be happy. But then you have those who are in worship teams and positions of nurse. How many of you are in here work in the nursery department? Huh? They're already, there. They're already there. Okay. But let's think about this for a moment. Now, if you truly and honestly love this church with all your heart, I want you to stand with me. Every one of you. If you can. If you can stand. Amen. Now, how many of you, be honest, how many of you have been offended by church? Not this church, but by church in itself. People. Well, my goodness, Nate, you're too tall for this church. <laughs> Some of you, I, I, I just don't, that's too flowery. I, I don't like that shirt. You know, there's people that do that. Hello. I like it. I like sunflowers. But here's the thing. Please don't get offended when I say this. But this is what happens. Man, your hair is just too bushy. <laughs> See, these are things that people use, Satan uses, to cause division. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in the Lord. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in the Lord. Now, this is what I want you to understand. I want every one of you, if you would, we're going to make a big circle around this sanctuary. And what we're going to do, we're going to make a net. Come on, not everybody wants now. Come on, step out. It's okay. I promise I ain't going to bite you. I'm not going to point you out. But stand side by side and make a big circle around this church. Make sure it connects. If you have to spread out a little bit, just make sure it connects. Now, I know as pastoring how how much a pastor and his wife sacrifice the tears the heartache the labor sometimes they're putting the lights in themselves sometimes they're doing other things by themselves sometimes they have a big promise of all the people that will help them and then they never show up to the pastors doing it but i want you to understand something right now we are part of the net together. If someone slips through the cracks, we should have a burden for that. Amen. Now understand, if it's a bad fish, it's a bad fish. There's, I mean, I don't care what you do. It's going to be take forever and ever to try to get a person back. There's just some you just got to let them go. Hello. But as a church family, now each and every one of us, Oh, I'm so, so hard on my heart. Come on. Bless the Lord. Go ahead. Bryce, come up here. Use him, Lord. Use him, Lord. Yeah. Not the other Bryce. <laughs> the other Bryce. <laughs> Why don't you stand right here? Grandma, come on up here. Pastor Jeff and April, why don't you come stand beside them as well? The rest of you boys, come on up here. Now bring the net together. Bring the net together. Okay. Now this is the mission of the church. All of us as a family of God rallying around our pastor and his family. Yes, amen. There are times, listen, there's times in ministry, I don't know, maybe Jeff never experienced it. Billy Graham was the only one I ever heard who said he never doubted his calling. There has been times I wanted to walk away from it all many times. But when you're called, you can't get away from it. So this is what I want to say. The kingdom of heaven is like the kingdom net. It catches fish. 
So every one of you are fishermen, fisherwomen. You, you like to, how many of you like to fish? Raise your hand again. Well, you're going to have to learn how to fish for fish of men. So it takes time coming to church, learning your Bible, reading your Bible, praying, coming to Bible school on Wednesday night, coming on Sunday morning. Listen, nothing is more important than Jesus Christ, especially in the time we're living in right now. So there's sometimes people don't want to hear that. Well, this is more important. I won't be here because this is going on. That's going on. This is going on. Okay, what if Jesus comes? Yeah, come on. It's that important. So what I want us to do as we are a whole net together. Jointly together, what is, what is the mission of this church? To go out and to win souls for Jesus. Amen. Amen. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to join hands together if you can. Don't worry, there's probably Germex out in the hallway. We can do your hands in. But it's so important that the net ties themselves together. Listen, there is, there is always good times. There's always bad times. There's going to be the ups. There's going to be the downs. There's going to be times of celebrating. There's going to be times of mourning. There's going to be times of laughter. It's all part of church. But listen, your pastor and his wife and family need your prayers every day. Amen. Because, listen, if he can get, if the devil can get the person in the pulpit, he's got the church. So greater is he that is in them than he that's in the world. So what I want us to do is I want us to pray for the pastor and his family right now. And I don't want you just to say, oh, Lord, give him a little bit of a blessing. I want us to just storm the gates of hell, take back the things that the enemy is trying to steal from them, their joy, their purpose, their reason. I want to let you know, I'm saying it to someone here this morning. God still loves you. God still cares about you. And it doesn't matter where you've been or where you're at right now. God's standing here with open arms and he's wanting to love you. He's wanting to forgive you. He's wanting to give you a hope and a future if you'll let him. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, now we pray for Pastor Jeff and April and the kids and the boys and the men, young men of God. Holy Spirit, may your spirit be poured out upon them afresh and anew today as we just celebrate and give honor where honors due. Father, wrap your arms around this family because the enemy is wanting to steal, to kill, and destroy. Lord, I know pastoring can be lonely. Pastoring can be sacrificing with tears and sorrow, but also with joy. So, Lord, sorrow may come for the night, but let the joy come in the morning in their hearts and their lives. And, Lord, for every one of us that are standing around this sanctuary this morning, Lord, as we hold our hands together, we pray for the person to the left. We pray for the person to our right. Yes. And we ask God that you would encourage them, that you would uplift them. Lord, that you would let them realize they have a purpose and a reason for being here today. They're not here by accident. They're here by appointment. They are ordained to be here for such a time as this. And Lord, the enemy would do more just to make us doubt in who we are. Lord, tempt us with worldly things. Lord, just tempt them weaken our flesh. But Lord, quicken us this morning. Quicken this church and bring us tighter and tighter together. Lord, the Bible says that forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some do. But even more than the day is approaching, we need to be in the house of the Lord. We need to be at our Father's house. Father God, there's so many people out there in this community that I believe in in all my heart you planted this church in this place for such a reason and a time for this. Father God, let this church everywhere they go, the Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell in unity. And the scripture also says, Lord, that this is how people will know that we are your disciples, by our love for one another. Lord, I just pray a rebuke against the bickering and complaining. I pray a rebuke against the things that someone feels that should be doing this or doing that and we're not doing it. Lord, we got to come together in unity. Lord, like I always said, we may not see eye to eye on everything, but we must stand arm in arm for the kingdom's sake and for the kingdom net to be able to grab and to bring in fish. Lord, we're going to bring in a load of fish. I, I really believe this church is about ready to explode. Lord, in the time that which we're living in, people are hungry. People are searching. Right now, they're searching in the wrong places. But Lord, right now, I believe in everything that's happening in our country today, it is opening people's eyes.
The blinders are coming off. I believe the giants are starting to come awake. And Lord, those are the giants that really stand and preach the gospel in the pulpits today. Give them the power, the anointing, the leading of the Holy Ghost, not to bend, not to compromise, not to give in and give up. But Lord, encourage them right now as we pray for this whole church and their leadership. May your power, may your blessing, may your kingdom come and your will be done in this church, in this earth, Lord, as it is in heaven. May the glory of God reign, Lord, not just in the sanctuary, but let the Spirit of God begin to go down every street around around this church and say there's bread in the house of bread again there's life in that church there's purpose in that church and it's just not saying hope for a reason there's hope in here there's Jesus the Holy Spirit is here God is here and Lord let the Holy Spirit just begin to minister to the hearts of your people not even in this church but outside right now and those Lord who may have left we pray for them encourage them and Lord it's at the pastor's heart it's not any our desire to see anyone leave so Lord we pray for your blessing upon them but Lord sometimes you've got to weed and prune the church you got to prune the vines in order for more fruit to come in Lord I really believe in it all my heart the fruitfulness of their labor is going to explode here soon in ways they never thought it was possible so, Lord, your word says the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. Lord, keep us and bind us together yes. with cords that cannot be broken. Amen. But, Lord, encourage us even more as we see the day approaching. We are to encourage one another, uphold one another, yes. be there for one another, be able to laugh and to cry with each other and not go out and tell everybody what's going on. But, Lord, when we pray, we just ask that you bless Jeff and his lovely wife April and their family and all the rest of the leadership in this church because Father God the, the net needs to stay tightly formed together and Lord if there's rips and there's tears like the enemy wants to do fish are going to be able to get through the net and we're going to be missing out we're going to be laboring and we're going to wonder why is we not seeing fruit from this why are we not seeing that from well just the net needs mended Lord so Lord mend hearts this morning those who have broken hearts Minister to those who just lost loved ones. Comfort them. But Lord, we praise you and thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for Jeff and April. I thank you, Lord, for the friendship. Well, they're family, so we have to accept them as friends in our hearts, too. That's just a joke. But Lord, we're blessed with them in our lives. Jeff is an encouragement to me, too. Iron sharpens iron. That's right. And Father God, we need to stand together. So Father God, as this whole church comes together, Hope Church. They stand together as one big net. One big net. Lord, even the Lone Ranger had a, had a partner, Tonto. He wasn't all by himself. There is no room for Lone Rangers here. We've got to labor together, cry together, laugh together, celebrate together. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to celebrate our pastor and his lovely wife and all that they do and all that they labor for. Let us continue to pray for them every single day. Lord, we should come expecting and believing for you to show up in this place. Lord, do we really, though? So, Father, just have your way. And, oh, Lord, I just want to give you praise and honor and glory as all of us in this circle begin to sing this song. It's a really old song. With your eyes closed, bind us together lord bind us together with cords that cannot be broken oh bind us together lord bind us together lord bind us together with love sing it again oh bind us together lord bind us together with cords that cannot be broken bind us together lord bind us together bind us together with love 
This is what I want to do. I want the worship team, if you would. The last song that you guys sung, I want you to begin to get that ready. And I want us to be able to just open our hearts. And if you have a need this morning, don't leave this place without receiving it. But I want them to come and I want us to begin to worship the Lord, begin to seek His face and understand. Listen, I've learned one thing. As, as much as I love Pastor Jeff and April, I love my beautiful wife over there, Wave. There she is. Pastors are going to come and go sometimes. No, and your pastors don't even. So don't be thinking that. But I don't want you to be worshiping him. Come on. I want you to be worshiping yeah. him. Yeah. I really feel upon my heart this morning more than one person here. You're doubting in who you are in Jesus. Satan has pulled you away begin to pull you it, listen it, it's a slow fade and I say this out of love but maybe maybe you're on the platform maybe you're maybe you're in some position in the church and you you just said in your heart in your life I just want to just take a break I'm just burning out well the truth of the matter is you're starting to backslide because when we feel like we're burning out, we feel like we're, you'll start making excuses of why you can't start coming to church then. And listen, it gets easier and easier. So I know I'm speaking to someone this morning. You feel like walking away. It's too late to turn back now. I really believe in it all my heart. Jesus is coming soon. So as we, as, as everyone went around encouraging each other to come to church, come back to church, they left, they came back. Listen, God is saying, I feel the Holy Spirit, God is saying, come back to me, son. Come back to me, daughter. And if I'm speaking to you, listen, it don't matter what other people think. If I'm speaking to you right now this morning, I want you to come and I want you to start to stand side by side across.